What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I figured it's been quite a while since we've done a grow room update, so I figured why not make that today's episode? Let's go. So the first thing I want to show you guys are the tomatoes. These are the giant crimson tomatoes, AKA the 87 year old tomatoes. As you can see, just tons and tons of blossoms. Look at these ones. Look at how beautiful that is. Just an incredible truss of flowers. I'll tell you what, this is probably the most beautiful truss of flowers I've ever seen. It's a perfect V formation. Just incredible. I mean, the genetics on this thing are just outstanding. Coming down here a little bit further, you'll see we actually have fruit set. Check that out. Look at that. These ones over here are doing quite a lot better. Not as much fruit set, but still doing quite a lot better in terms of just overall health. As you can see, these ones here are doing really great. Um, that watering issue just took a toll on that, on that poor guy over there. But as you can tell here, we got a little bit of a magnesium deficiency that's being fixed. We, we applied more trifecta down to the base there and all the new growth coming out is great. That's the thing about growing indoors is you're constantly working with things like nutrient deficiencies because uh, they use up the nutrients so quickly in the small pots that they're in. So you just got to refertilize when you start to see stuff like that and they'll bounce back really quickly. But as you can tell here, beautiful amounts of flowers we have some more fruit set. We do have some more fruit set down here on this plant. There's actually two tomatoes coming on. Looking real great. As far as the tropical garden goes, doing really well. There were some plants that did not appreciate the move down here as much as I expected. And so they kind of let me know. But other than that, doing very well. I'll show you the plants first that did not appreciate the move. And then I'll show you the plants that actually appreciated it. So the first plant that did not appreciate the move that I almost expected it is the cacao tree. As you can tell though, lots more growth coming out. It'll bounce back. They just hate the move. The humidity is always different. The temperatures are always different. Everything's always different. And so they did not like the move at all. I think this thing lost like 10 sets of leaves, but it's bouncing back just fine. The other one that did not appreciate the move as much as I thought it would, I thought it would really like it. Turned out it hated it. The papaya. The papaya has put on a lot more new growth since I moved it down here, but by no means did it like it. It lost so many sets of leaves, and we really, really did not, uh, we really did not expect that because I thought, hey, this thing's tropical. I've got all the stuff going for it. It's growing really well. It's been growing really well for like a year now for us. It's going to be fine. I did not appreciate that whatsoever. Now, one of the plants that absolutely loved the move was our avocado. It actually flowered, but because it's so small, the flowers all fell off. It just was not strong enough to set fruit, but it's got a ton of new growth coming out everywhere. The leaves are nice and green. I don't think I've lost a single leaf on this since the move. It's just done awesome. Nice glossy green leaves doing wonderfully. Same thing with the curry tree. The curry tree has actually put on a ton of new growth. This thing has grown about three inches since we moved it down here. All these lighter colored leaves are not uh, sickly, they're just new leaves. When they mature, they start to turn more of a dark green like this. So this thing has just pushed out growth like crazy and it's really liking it. The other plant that absolutely loved the move that I knew would love it is the banana tree. This thing has put out five new sets of leaves. It's grown about 25% since we moved it down here and the leaves just keep getting bigger. So I'm really happy about this one. This is a, this is definitely a, a really nice plant to have. I just love the foliage, it's so nice. All right, and the last two plants that did super well with the move are the bay leaf tree. The bay tree has about put on about 25, 30% more growth since we moved it down here, done really well. And then this, this is the dragon fruit. This whole thing has grown in the past two weeks. And these little things right here, I know I'm gonna get asked about that. These little white fibers are actually aerial roots. 
if the tree or if the tree, if the cactus happens to fall on the ground under high winds or it snaps, these will actually set on the ground and set roots. And that's how it uh, guarantees its survival. All right, and now we're here with the grand finale, the part of this episode that all of you have been asking about and bugging me about in a good way on Facebook and Instagram. You guys have just been just throwing out the comments saying, when's the next update? We wanna see the garden. So that's what you're gonna see now. So I appreciate it. Bugging me is fine. I don't mind bugging, I love it because then it, uh, it shows me that you wanna see it and I love doing things you guys wanna see. So the first thing that I figured I'd show off are the tomatoes. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what, all of you guys have asked me, are, are there anything that you, have you ever uh, started stuff that doesn't have good germination rates? And the answer is no, no, not really. I mean, if it's fresh seed and it's, uh, it's seed from sources that I can trust or sources from our own store and garden, I have no problem putting 100% confidence in the quality of seeds. And that's kind of evident by this tray right here. You can see, and I also want to make it a note that, you know, there are always circumstances where a seed might not germinate. That's why we always advocate putting in two to three seeds per cell because nothing's ever guaranteed. It's, this is mother nature, mind you. And I think it is a, a very common misconception that there can be a guarantee. Now, to a certain extent, there can be a guarantee but with Mother Nature, there never is a 100% guarantee because it's Mother Nature. <laughs> I mean, can you control anything from Mother Nature? If you can, let me know because I'd really like to change the weather right now outside. Um, it's supposed to be like 50 degrees this weekend and it somehow just dropped down to 26 uh, as a low and 36 for a high. So if you can control Mother Nature, please do. But this is just another circumstance that you know you can't always control things but what you can do is you can increase your chance of success with things you can control, like how many seeds you plant. You know, it's much better, in my opinion, to plant three seeds in a cell and then do the thinning later than it is to just plant one. But that's how I get these beautiful trays here. Start with good quality seed and start a few seeds in each cell and you never have any issues. This is 100% success rate on every single variety. And you can tell here, check it out, look at that. Absolutely beautiful, just stunning. I absolutely love just, there we go, now it's in focus. I just love looking at all the different leaf patterns because they're always different. Every single tomato is different. So cool. We did have some stragglers that just kind of germinated. In fact, uh, the one that I'm really excited about is this, uh, this champagne bubbles. Very, very small sprouts. They just germinated the other day. I was worried that they were gonna be the first one that didn't germinate that had poor germination rates, and they actually just started to germinate. So 100% germination rate on, well not 100% germination rate, 100% success rate with our seedlings um, in the tomato category. Nothing has sprouted yet on the seeds that we just started for our cool and cold weather crops. As for this tray here of just random assorted things, this has like herbs and onions and celery and flowers, it's just kind of a grab bag flat. Uh, this is this is just a, a fun example of just, I love looking at the different textures. This is part of why gardening is so therapeutic for me. It's just the amount of different textures and smells and colors and it's just so fascinating. But I love this, I absolutely love this. I love looking at all the different little herb plugs because every one is so different. And yet they're all, you know, they're all plants that are going to go in my garden. It's just so incredible to see biodiversity at work. But yeah, you, we got the herbs popping up. They did really well. Lemongrass there is doing nicely. Um, and then there's also a lot of onions here. We started some more onions of some different varieties we got our hands on. Um, and then there's all, also the flowers. The flowers are doing really well. Look at the flowers. We got the, the ornamental grass and the calendula. The violas just started germinating. This, these ones here, they're kind of space hogs right now, are the purple, uh, the, this is actually the, the purple Italian globe artichoke. And then there's the green globe artichoke right, right there. Uh, there's celosia and straw flowers. Um, there are, which are bachelor buttons. Um, there are some more straw flowers there. And, uh, and then there are some, some more ornamental grasses. So that's gonna be really cool. And then I did get some more tomatoes right here. I got a uh, Pisano, a Pai Pai, and a Jersey Devil. 
These are really cool heirlooms that I, I just had to kind of add to my collection because I, well, you know me. I can never leave well enough alone when it comes to tomatoes. <laughs> I, I thought I had enough and I thought I came across those and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I got to have them. All right. And then the final thing is our onion flap. I absolutely love this. is just so satisfying to look at. I mean, just check this out. I mean, this is, this is, this is why I garden right here. This is why I garden. But there is something about nice orderly rows of seedlings. It's just so satisfying to the eye. But another question we also got is, Luke, how come the, the onions love to hold on to their seed heads? Is that something wrong? The answer is no. They usually shed those after about two or three weeks. They will hold on to those and there's nothing wrong with it. That's just how they grow. Um, we've had a lot of people that were worried about after they drop the after they drop the uh, the seed coating, you get these little you can't I'm not even sure if you can see them, but you can kind of tell they're some some brown fuzzy spots. They're not brown fuzzy spots, but like little brown wilted spots. It almost looks like leaf burn. And we had a lot of people writing in since they've been starting onions, um, and they've said, "Hey, is there something wrong with my onions? They got some some." browning and, and leaf tip burn. Am I over fertilizing? Am I over watering? Should I be worried? The answer is no. The answer is no. The reason is because they hold on to the, to the seed coating so long that it actually chokes out that tip of the leaf because these are leaves, mind you. These are actually leaves. And because that part of the, the leaf can't photosynthesize from the lights or from the sun, it actually just dies back. And that's eventually what leads to the tops dropping off is it just dries up and then it drops. But yep, yeah, not to worry, that's very normal. But yeah, that's looking incredible and really excited about our onions this year. We're gonna have a lot of onions, I'm so excited. We're gonna be growing them high intensity again and we're going to be putting them anywhere and everywhere we can have space. So, all right, that is pretty much everything. I don't know, uh, I don't know anything else to show you because that's pretty much everything in our grow room. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments box below. I'd be happy to show you over on Facebook with a little picture. That's a great way to do these little updates from time to time. So if you're not yet following us over on Facebook, make sure to do that. You'll be very happy. There's so much over there that we're posting all the time and uh, live streams and fun stuff like that. But then also, if you're not yet following us on Instagram, I recommend doing that. From time to time, we'll just share a snippet update of things that are happening in the grow room or around the garden. Recommend following us over there. That's definitely a good decision. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. So until next time, I hope all of you are growing big or going home. I hope you were inspired by this episode or learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya.